viewers, my name is Kara. A while back, I went to the grand opening of the Buckland Museum and Gallery of Witchcraft, or the Buckland Gallery of Witchcraft Museum. It's had a couple names. According to the official logo, it's just the Buckland Gallery of Witchcraft and Magic. So we'll go with that. Anyway, a friend of mine, local friend, I think either shared the event or actually invited me to the event on Facebook, and that's how I found out about it. And I happened to be free that night, so I made plans to go. When I got there with my friend, it was right around the time that it said the event was going to start, and there was already a line out the door. Because the Buckland Gallery is in Cleveland, and it's actually in a small side room attached to a record store in Tremont. So for the grand opening, since there were a ton of people there, there actually is a door that goes directly into the gallery that has the gallery logo on it, and that's where they had a ribbon across the front for the ribbon cutting ceremony. But there's also a door into the record shop, and they were bringing everyone in through the record shop. It's called a separate reality. So everybody walked in eventually, and we went down along the windows, and then over at that end there was a table with some snacks and veggies, cookies, pretzels, things like that, and water and drinks, and then you would double back the same direction and then go forward to the area where we would be entering the gallery. And because they were only letting in, I know I wasn't actually counting, probably around eight-ish people at a time because it's a very small room and there's a lot to look at, we ended up waiting in line for 45 minutes. But for me, it was entirely worth it because Raymond Buckland was there. He was there to do the ribbon cutting ceremony as well as being inside to talk to people, sign books, take pictures. So we'll get to that in a second. But anyway, for me it was entirely worth it and my friend who came with me is very new to learning about all the different things that I know about and so I kept saying to them this must be for them how I felt when I went to England five years ago, far too long ago, with my friends who were already huge Doctor Who fans and I was only just getting into it at the time and we took day trips to Cardiff and we walked for what seemed like forever to Mermaid K to see the entrance to Torchwood and I was just like, yeah, this is all cool but I don't really understand why it's relevant and like why it's so cool, I just knew that it was cool. That's how I imagine my friend felt standing in line for 45 minutes with me to see Raymond Buckland and a bunch of magic stuff. Like, they knew it was cool, but they didn't really know the significance, they don't really know why it's cool yet. So then we came home and I like got out my books, my encyclopedias, and I was like, this is Raymond Buckland, this is the man we just met. And they are like, oh, okay, so yeah. Anyway, once we got in there, they had a little bit of merch, so I did buy a pin for myself and my friend all the cash I had on me and they glow in the dark so it's really cool I have it on my bag which is my pagan pride tote bag that I carry around everywhere I was actually kind of disappointed that I didn't see more people I recognized from Cleveland pagan pride which just made me think where are all these witches hiding but anyway we finally get in there I'm making you wait just like we had to wait just kidding I'm just telling a really long story so we finally get in there and the first thing I see to the right, behind the door, is this adorable little witch plate. It's like a little, a little cute little witch is just my aesthetic all over it. And then there's this big glass case with a bunch of ritual paraphernalia in it. And I noticed a picture of Oberon and Morning Glory's El Ravenheart, little figurines and a beautiful headdress, and there's Lady Rowan's crescent headdress and cuff that were made by Gerald Gardner. And there is this beautiful wand, beautiful wand with clay and crystals and it's got blue and it's made of wood. And so I'm taking a picture of it. And then the woman standing by the exit door helping people, you know, cycle through says, you're taking a picture of my wand. And I was like, you're, you're, oh, it's beautiful. And she was like, thank you. And I felt really horrible that I didn't know who she was. So if you're watching this now, I'm sorry, I don't know, I didn't know who you were. But that's fine because you didn't know who I am either. Who am I? It doesn't matter. Anyway, I ended up following her on Instagram and she makes beautiful wands just like this one that happened to be hanging in this display, or actually it was sitting in this display, underneath where one of Aleister Crowley's wands was hanging. Anyway, so we're looking all over and I kept thinking like, wow, this is really cool, but I wish I knew what it all was because it wasn't like in a museum where there's a little placard right next to everything in the display case, right? So then we move on to the next display case and meanwhile there's a bunch of other people in the room milling about so we're trying to kind of follow a certain pattern. So we move over to the next display case which is a traditional like glass case and on top of it are laminated keys to what everything in all of the cases are so you look at the thing and it has a photograph of the case 
with numbers next to each item and then there's a list of numbers and explaining what everything is. I'm like, oh perfect, so then we kind of had to go back and back and forth to figure out what everything was. And I did not want to take the time to go through everything, it would have taken forever and I knew that there was still a huge line out there behind us. So just being courteous, I looked at everything and I only looked up on the key certain things that I really wanted to know what they were. And above that glass case was, da 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 da, picture here, Gerald Gardner's besom was hanging above everything. I knew that that's what it was because I had looked up articles about the gallery beforehand and it had mentioned that Gerald's besom was in a place of honor. There was also a besom above the door where you enter from the Long Island Coven, if I recall. And a set of Raymond Buckland's ritual robes were there, the purple ones. And then there's another case. One side of it was all divination stuff, palmistry, cards, all sorts of things. And of course there was a key explaining what everything was. And then the next case over, which is actually my cover photo header on my Twitter profile right now, was chalices, mortar and pestles, bottles, and athames. And these were the really, really cool thing to me. And again, I didn't go through all of them because there was not time, but several of them were like Raymond Buckland's athame from his first initiation into the coven. Sybil Leake's athame that was made by her grandmother and an athame that belonged to Christopher Penzac, things like that. So when you look at everything in there, it's like, oh, this stuff is cool, and like you know it's magical, <laughs> but you don't really understand why until you look at the key and find out, ooh, this is who this belonged to, and then it's like, oh my god, I am like a layer of glass away from this item that belonged to this person and was a piece of history and is a piece of history, and it was just really, really cool. And I was geeking out the whole time and my, my friend loved just watching me freak the fuck out. In the center of the room, there was an altar that they had set up. I don't think I got a picture of this because I it was like the last thing as we walked out that we saw it actually because people had been milling around looking at it. But I just always think it's so cool when you go somewhere else and there's like, you know, someone like Raymond Buckland who helped teach a million people through his books and in person and just look at like the altar that they have set up in this gallery and just look at how simple it is and how there's the god and the goddess candle the four elements represented and there's like a few other items and that's it there's a pentacle in the center it's very simple and it's just so cool to know that like someone like me who was completely solitary and self-taught because I never knew any of these people when I was starting out over a decade ago that you can read a book and read how it's supposed to be done and you set up your little altar and you're like is this right and then years later you go to Buckland's gallery and this is how they've set up the altar it's the same thing I could have done when I was 12 and it just feels like such an an awesome connection. So of course, before we left, we did speak with Raymond Buckland. I only own one of his books and I didn't even think to bring it because it used to belong to my mom and I don't know if I'm gonna keep it. It's the spirit book, I think is what it's called. But there was a person before us in line, actually when we were still waiting to get in, there was a woman who had purchased a copy of the Big Blue book and she had a copy of the red cover book, which is another one, I don't remember the name of it. But she came out and she was explaining to the woman who was selling the merchandise where she had to come back out to pay for the book that she grew up with Buckland's big blue book and that one was already signed so she brought the second one here for him to sign and she also bought a copy of the blue book for her son so that she could teach him the same way that she had been taught and she got it signed by the author and got to meet him and just, I just thought that was so cool that's such an awesome thing to witness and I was just like geeking out the whole time anyway so I got to talk to Mr. Buckland and at the time he was sitting down he's wearing a purple shirt my favorite color. He was sitting down like checking something on his phone and I said Mr. Buckland and he stood up and he's all smiley and just wonderful and he has such good energy and I said Mr. Buckland it is so nice to meet you in person. I've emailed with you before. I sent you a video that I did on my collaborative channel on YouTube that I run Pagan Perspective when we were talking about your big blue book and I emailed you for your opinion on it and you wrote me back and said that I was doing a good job and it was like the best thing that's ever happened to me and I'm just so glad that you're here and I'm so grateful. I didn't really cry but it was basically something stupid like that and he was like oh my gosh I'm just I'm so 
grateful to be here too. I'm so thankful that I can be here and that the gallery is here in Cleveland. And I was like, yeah, I can't believe that this is in Cleveland. And you know, it's like right around the corner from me. And so I talked to him a little bit. I introduced him to my friend and the gallery curator, whose name is Steven, if I recall, overheard my conversation, took some pictures for us and also invited me to make an appointment to come back to see the collection and do a video on it sometime. So thumbs up this video and let me know in the comments if you would like to see me go back to view the collection and maybe talk to them more about it, get some more footage of things rather than just pictures and going through everything quickly. I would love to go back, obviously. And because it's such a small room, they cannot fit everything of the collection into that room at once. So they're actually gonna be rotating a lot of the items so that you can go if you ever have the opportunity, if you are Cleveland area local or it's good enough for a day drive, they have hours, but also you can make appointments to go see stuff. So I think it's definitely worth it if you're interested in the history of witchcraft, especially as it came into America from Gardner's lineage through Raymond Buckland. You don't necessarily have to be a Gardnerian Wiccan to appreciate it because it's witchcraft in general, right? It's all the stuff. And I just think it's really cool. So I will most definitely go back other times and see the other bits of the collection that they have on display. But I might also contact them sometime and go back and set up time to do a video about it. So I don't know when that'll happen, but it's really exciting. And let me know if you're excited about it too. I, I had a great day. It was just, it was a very cool opportunity. And it was nice to finally get a picture with Mr. Buckland instead of just his car. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, don't forget to be awesome, blessed be, and goodbye.